Hello, I'm Luca Kumai, and I'm pleased today to talk to you about inbreeding. Inbreeding is what happens when you take a hybrid organism, which is defined by having many heterozygous loci, and you subject it to either selfing or crossing to something which is similar, and we get another type of organism after a number of generations, which is called an inbred. The inbred is defined by being homozygous at many loci. What is the significance of inbreeding? From a point of view of agriculture, for example, inbreeding refers to the creation of pure breeds. And the significance of pure breeds is that if I have two individuals of a pure breed, such as German Shepherds, I cross one female to one male, I can expect that the puppies will indeed be German Shepherds. It's a concept that we're quite familiar with, for which we actually have no specific explanation most of the time. Why do German Shepherds breed to produce German Shepherds? Why do Siamese cats produce progeny that looks like their parents? The reason is they have very low heterozygosity, and so they don't throw off these new types which have been hiding in the process of having an heterozygous genome. The same concept applies to many plant varieties. If you grow beans, chances are that these beans are inbred. Now, there's a second significance here, which is that if I take two inbred, if I take inbred A, and I cross it times inbred B, in 100% of the, of the case, I'm going to get an AB hybrid. This does not represent genes, purely the fact that the two parents contributed to this hybrid. The phenotype of this hybrid is 100% predictable. It will be always the same. So not only the inbred produces inbred that are the same, but two inbreds, when crossed to each other, will produce a hybrid which looks the same. Of course, things stop right there, because if we were to take this hybrid and self it, then we are going to get, in the case of plant, many different types which will all carry, in fact, different types of homozygous genes and heterozygous genes. So there will be reshuffling the whole genome and giving us a big variety. The last significant thing I want to tell you about inbreeding is that individuals such as humans are typically not inbred. They represent the product of uh, crossing of individuals which are quite different, and therefore the progeny of humans tends sometimes to resemble the parents, but often they're quite different. They'll be taller, they'll be shorter, they'll have different color hair, different color uh, eyes, and so and so forth. There are certain human communities, however, that have a higher rate of inbreeding than is common. These are communities, for example, where cousins will uh, be mated and will produce progeny that will have a much higher likelihood than the regular population to have homozygous loci. When homozygous loci are formed, in some cases, they will uncover recessive diseases which were previously hidden in the set of heterozygous genes that were most common in that population. So the formation of recessive homozygote will give rise to genetic conditions which are not common in populations that do not inbreed. Now, what is the rate of inbreeding according to different methods of inbreeding? To give you an idea on how rapidly one can approach homozygosity, I've made some very simple plots here to show what happens when you do selfing in plants. By the sixth or eighth generation, you have nearly 100% homozygosity. These are the generation of inbreeding. This is the curve with selfing. This is the curve with sibs in breeding, which means that you mate brother and sister, typically done in breeding of dogs and horses and cows. In humans, when cousins in breeding is common, you find that the rate of approach to homozygosity is in fact much slower than with this other in breeding technique, but it's still nevertheless measurable. I've told you about in breeding. I've defined what an inbred individual is. We looked at how in breeding is manifested or is achieved by taking a population through successive ge generation, for example, of selfing. We have looked at it from the point of view of individuals where many, many genes are present and determine how these individuals 
as they are extracted from more and more advanced population of inbreeding tend to manifest a higher, higher level of homozygosity. And then we have talked about the implication of being an inbred in the context of agricultural, of breeding, and of medical sciences. Thank you.